everybody. Happy Monday. It's January 18th. It's Martin Luther King Day. So much is going on. Um, we're all busy and I love it. Um, I think it's going to be another great week, week, a little bit chillier, but you know what? Like I said, we've made it through almost all of January without 70 below. So as far as I'm concerned, we're extremely lucky. Lucky. Let's start off with our daily pledge. Today is a new day. I'm ready to be the best me I can be. I will listen so I can learn. I will try hard so my brain can grow. I will not give up. I can learn anything I put my mind to. So I'm not sure how your weekend went or how your morning's going, but let's brush it off. Today is a new day. Remember, it's Motivation Monday. It's your opportunity to start fresh, work on your goals, figure out what motivates you, what gets you going, what do you need to get done? Uh, do you need to make some lists so that you can tackle some projects? Do you need to get in a better routine? Do you need to watch your food? Do you need to get better sleep? Um, there's a full moon next week, so let's not worry about that right this second, but sometimes you start to see kind of the effects of that. But most importantly, making sure you're staying on your routine eating healthy, drinking your water, going for a walk. Even if it's a little bit chillier out, put some gloves on, put your winter coat on, put your hat on and go for a walk, get some fresh air. You got to keep moving, right? And so that's one of the ways that we're going to keep ourselves well. And if we can keep ourselves well, we can work on our relationships, right? Okay. So last week we talked about relationships. We talked about narcissism and I wasn't quite done talking about it yet. My time gets very short. Okay. And so we need to go back to that because not only in a, remember we talked about, it doesn't have to just be in like in an intimate relationship. This can be in a friend relationship, a family relationship. If you have somebody in your life that creates um, negative feelings, we have to take a good look at that because are they becoming um, a negative influence in your life? Are they bringing in some sort of a dark cloud? Are they causing you anxiety or causing you to change who you are? If that's the case, those people need to go. Okay. And so one of the things that talking about gaslighting, and I think I might've touched base a little bit about this last week, but I want to go back to it because gaslighting is something that happens in many relationships that maybe people don't even Id identify or recognize. When people are gaslighting you, they're starting to try and figure out a way to manipulate you into confusion and to not even know, you start to feel as if you've lost your mind, or if you don't even know what you're talking about, who you are, what you want, what's going on, you start to kind of, you get confused and you you start to feel as though maybe they are right. And so then you start changing yourself to, sit, to meet their needs and to what they think or say because... It must be true if they keep telling me this and, and you lose yourself, okay? So anyways, here are some signs of gaslighting in your relationship, okay? We're talking about this again because part of mental health and part of recovery is having positive people in your life. And you may think that you have somebody positive in your life, but in the end, they could actually be maybe that one common denominator that's that's causing you more distress, that's causing you more problems. And so we need to get rid of those people. We need to eliminate them so we can put positive influences in our life to make the changes we need so we can grow and, and be our best self, right? So number one, they no longer, okay, so gaslighting in your relationship, okay? Number one, no longer feeling like the person you used to be. When you start to forget who you were and what you were all about, you're in a gaslighting relationship. Now they've whittled you down into believing things that they think, not what you think, and now you've lost yourself. You don't remember who you used to be. You look at pictures and you say, who was that person? How do I get back there? How did I get to be this person? Well, I can tell you that people in your life create that person. Number two, being more anxious and less confident than you used to be. If you find yourself being wound tighter than a top and you're super anxious and they've just created you to feel this so uncertain and unsure of yourself, they are gaslighting you. Number three, often wondering if you're being too sensitive. If you find yourself on an emotional roller coaster, good morning, everybody. If you find yourself on an emotional roller coaster of just tears and feeling all over the place and overwhelmed and anxious and unsure of yourself, that's a sign. Uh, number four, feeling like everything you do is wrong. If you can't do anything right and these people make sure that you know that you did nothing right, that's a sign. Number five, always thinking it's your fault when things go wrong. Taking the blame for everything. When something doesn't feel right or something didn't go well, if you're taking that blame all the time, that person or those people in your life have made you feel that way. Not everything is your fault. Nothing's your fault. Unless, of course, you did something, but you don't have to take responsibility for their emotions and their situation because it's not your fault. Um, apologizing all the time, having a sense that something's wrong, but being able, unable to identify it. When you know something's not right, 
but you just can't put your finger on it, they are just taking away your brain power. It's kind of what it's like. They're taking away your ability to think for yourself, to care for yourself, and to kind of be able to um, recognize anything around you. Um, often questioning whether your response to your partner is appropriate. Always wanting to feel like you have to be perfect. You're never good enough, okay? That's what they create. Making excuses for your partner's behavior. Avoiding giving information to family or friends to avoid confrontation about your partner. If you have to make up stories about that person or that friend in your life to avoid problems so that your family doesn't judge them, you've been part of gaslighting. Uh, feeling isolated from friends and family. Finding it increasingly hard to make decisions and feeling hopeless and taking little or no pleasure in activities you used to joy. Basically, like I talked about last week, they whittle you down to nothing. They make you so that you, you have nothing, you are nothing, you can't think about nothing, and you don't have anybody around you to tell you any differently because now they've eliminated your ability to even make a decision. Now they've made it so that you're so dependent on them, you can't do anything or function without them, or you think that what they have told you is true. And so if they've told you that you can never be anything without them, you start to believe that's true. So you don't leave them. You stay in that relationship forever and ever and ever because that's just what happens. Because they've made you feel like you just can't, you don't have the ability to be on your own, you don't have the ability to think on your own, and you need them. But I'm here to tell you that you don't. I just want to go back over this really quick. Uh, so what narcissists and abusers don't want you to know, okay? Number one, they really don't want you to be the best, okay? They don't want what's best for you. They don't want you to be your best. They want you to be underneath them all the time. They are here, you are here, okay? So what they don't want you to know is that they don't want anything that's good for you. They wanna make sure that whatever's going on is best for them, and they don't want you to be better than them. If you start to become better than them, their uh, abuse and their emotional abuse and their words will get worse, okay? It's going, to be, it's going to intensify because they can't take the fact that you might be better than them, okay? Or that you might have more than them. They don't want that, okay? Um, what they don't want you to know is hurting you feeds them. Knowing that you're hurt and sad and confused and anxious and depressed, it makes them feel that they're worth something. It makes them feel good because now they're even one more notch ahead of you. They've really stepped up their game. Now you're really down here on the bottom because now you're so emotionally fragile, you really need them. Okay, they, they, they like that, okay? Um, your feelings don't matter to them at all. They don't care if you're upset or sad. That, that doesn't matter to them because you know what? Your feelings don't affect them. It's all about them. And if they feel fine, then you should feel fine. And if you don't feel fine, that sounds like a you problem, okay? So that's kind of another thing about narcissists and abusers and negative people in your life. You can never make them happy. When you are in a relationship with somebody like this, you can never make them happy. You're wasting your time. Uh, they don't want you, they don't want or believe in the happily, happily ever after, okay? They're never happy with anything. They will whittle you down to nothing and then they will move on to the next person and the next person and the next person. They're never happy with themselves. They're never happy with life. They are always just trying to make people miserable around them because that makes them feel better. Um, trying to persuade them to be better only makes them worse because now you're trying to tell them they're not good enough, but they don't believe that because they're always perfection, right? So again, that's kind of a looming cloud, but I wanted to go back. So a part of that is this, we've talked about there's there's physical abuse, there's social abuse, emotional abuse, things like that, okay? In relationships, um, one of the biggest things that I think we get caught up in, one of the things that cr creates the most anxiety, the most depression, um, your self-esteem and your confidence goes right down the tank is emotional abuse. It's that constant when they're telling you things and they're making you think things, it's that emotional abuse, okay? When people start to say things to you just to upset you or frighten you, that's emotional abuse. But when they become overly um, overly and inappropriately jealous of attention from others and conversations. If you can't even talk to somebody without them getting upset at you, that's emotional abuse. If they're upset that you spent too much time with family, if you spent too much time with friends, if they're upset about the fact that you're not giving them 100% of their attention, that's emotional abuse, okay? Uh, number three, when they start monitoring your time and your whereabouts, and they start to make sure that you didn't say, they're charting out your time. You said you were gonna be here at 11, and you're only gonna be there for an hour, but now it's been three hours. What were you doing? Who were you doing it with? What was going on? When they start tracking and controlling your time and your whereabouts, and the who, what, when, where, why, and how, that's emotional abuse. 
when they start monitoring your phone calls, your texts, and your email contacts. That's emotional abuse. When they start making decisions that affect both of you or, their fa or your family without consulting you or reaching an agreement with you. When they start controlling the finances and how you spend money. Repeatedly crosses your boundaries and ignores your requests. Make subtle threats or negative remarks with the intent to frighten or control you, okay? When they start coming at you, sometimes friends or family or um, your partner will do this to you. They start coming at you to frighten you, okay? They want to control you. They want it to make it seem like you don't have any sort of decision. You can't make a decision. You are not strong enough. You are weak and you need them. And that's not true. Um, they show complete disregard and disrespect. If they continue to disrespect you time and time again, remember, then they'll tell you, well, I'm sorry, okay? And then we move on. We don't get to go back to that. It doesn't matter if that sorry was just a, just a little like, yeah, I'm sorry, okay, whatever, get over it. They don't care because in their mind, they didn't do anything wrong. And you need to suck it up. Um, disregard your opinions, ideas, suggestions, and needs. If they have no intention of listening to what your hopes and dreams are, your needs or your wants, remember, again, it's all about them. If they don't think it's necessary, then it's not. And if it doesn't fit into their world, then it's not going to happen anywhere, okay? So it doesn't matter what you want, what you think or need. If it doesn't fit into their little equation, it's not going to happen. If they make jokes at your expense, they're always like throwing you under the bus and you're always wrong and they're always right. Um, use a sarcasm or teasing to put up, put put you down, and they swear at um, they swear at you or call you names. If you have a partner who um, comes at you, swears at you, calls you names, disrespects you, and tries to whittle you down to nothing, they need to go. So here we go. All right, we're gonna take this is gonna get go kind of quickly, but I want to read this because I I like this. It's called healing. Okay, it says. The first step in healing from narcissistic abuse is realizing that you have been abused. You have to accept that they were putting on an act. You were dealing with a very disordered, and disordered individual. They function in life and in their relationships by the way of manipulation and corruption. They don't know any other way. This is who they are. They are wired differently and they see people as puppets for their own entertainment and use. You have to accept that this is not your fault. And that it is this way, and that this way is the way they relate to everyone. They are broken people who are angry and resentful and want nothing more in life than to make sure they break other people too. It is a sick way of looking at the world, but this is the way they function. They are sadistic people who can't handle anyone being happier or better than them. Get out and go. No contact. You didn't break them and you absolutely cannot fix them. But... They definitely could and will break you if you stay. That's pretty powerful. When you break away from a relationship this negative and this controlling, you have to cut off all ties. You cannot allow them one ounce of any sort of contact with you ever again. You have to break that or you have to set such a defined wall and such a defined boundary that no matter what, you will continue to see through all of it. They're going to try to swindle you back in. They're going to try and schmooze you over like they've changed and, and they're making ditch, you know changes in their life. I can assure you they are not, okay? So here's some things about healthy relationships, okay? Here's what we need to be looking for, okay? What is healthy? Communication. It is okay to communicate and to listen and then to have people understand you. When you're in an abusive relationship with somebody, they don't listen to you, they don't care what they say, they never understand you, they shut you down, they tell you you're stupid and they move on because it doesn't matter to them. But when you're in a healthy relationship, you can communicate, you can talk openly with them and others outside of your relationship, okay? You are able to think, they understand you, they hear you, they support you, okay? That's huge. That's something that none of us know anything about. If you've been in any sort of abusive relationship, you have no idea what that's like. Well, then you start to realize, like, is this true? I don't know. One of the things that I can tell you is when you finally get out of a relationship that's toxic and negative, it takes a long time to accept somebody in your life that's good because you start to question it. You don't know if it's real. You don't feel like you deserve it. You have to really sit there and think about what this means in your life to actually be happy and to have that person in your life that cares about you. It really takes a long time to allow it to set in and to understand that. 
and to realize like, yes, gosh darn it, I am worth it. I do deserve that. I need to have somebody in my life who supports me and cares about me. Everybody deserves that, right? Um, you need to make sure that you're both equal. You hold each other to the same standards and to the highest regard. You encourage each other's independence and goals, okay? You need to find somebody in your life who respects you, who challenges you, who supports you, who encourages you to take every step possible that you can to meet your goals and to be the best person. They want to be a, a cheerleader right along with you, not shove you in a little can and put on the top and throw you away. Okay, if you have somebody in your life who wants to put a cap on you and throw it aside and never wants to see you succeed or fulfill anything in your life, they need to go. They give you personal space. They're honest with you. They respect you, okay? But they're also there to tell you, hey, Becky, that's probably not a good idea. Okay, they're going to provide some sort of feedback, which is okay. That's a good thing. And they, you both enjoy time apart, and you need your space, and you need to be an individual, okay? Um, we're going to continue with relationships, and we're going to move on to healthy relationships, okay? And we're going to talk about accountability and safety and honesty and support and cooperation and trust, okay? This is what we're going to continue to talk about next, tomorrow, okay? We're going to continue to talk about the importance of finding healthy relationships and, and building healthy um, support systems around us so that you can continue to be your best self. Um, you can work on your health, your physical health, your well-being, your mental health, your coping skills, um, when you start to put healthy relationships in your life and people that build you up and support you and cheerlead you, it'll be inter interesting for you to see what starts to happen around you. It's like the world starts to create like endless opportunities and that open door so that you can be your best self and you can reach your goals. It's truly an amazing thing that starts to happen in your life because sky's the limit. You don't feel alone anymore and you don't feel like this black cloud looms over you every day of your life. You know, it's kind of like this door opens and this bright light says, hey, come on through. Let's work on our goals. Let's work on being happy. Let's live our best self and let's have people in our life that support us to give us kind of that nudge through the door and be with us every step of the uh, every step of the way. So again, happy Monday. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit cooler out today, but go for a walk, get some fresh air. Uh, most importantly, take a look at your relationships. I did tell you this last week, but don't forget about it. Start to evaluate things in your life so that you can have the most supportive people there so you can really start to focus on your recovery, um, reducing your mental health, improving your physical health, and really just take a look at your wellness wheel. Let's start balancing that out. Let's start doing good things with ourselves, reaching our goals, staying motivated. Now is the time. The time is now to be me responsible. Put good people in our life. Make changes, okay? We're starting off on a new year and a new you. And so now is the time to do that. And if you need more help with that and more support with that, and you need more suggestions on how to get negative people out of your life, just give me a call, message me on Facebook, send me an email. I can help you with that. But tomorrow we're going to continue to talk about healthy relationships. But for the meantime, have an amazing day. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you have an amazing uh, rest of your day. Go out, uh, capitalize, on, capitalize on it, be grateful for things, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.